Hello everyone, it's me again. Um, the format's changed slightly. I am now filming on my iPad because my poor phone just couldn't take it anymore. It was just too much. And so I can't show you anything on the iPad anymore, any pictures. Um, and I've shifted about a bit. You get to see all around my terrible house. <laughs> but the point of today's video is in the diamond painting group that I'm in and just generally on my videos and everything, tend to get the same questions coming up and I wanted to do an FAQ video so this is a long time coming um, so this is particularly aimed at people who are newer to the craft maybe you've got a kit for Christmas or you've just started and I wanted to give you a few <coughs> answers to questions that I've seen and hopefully give you a head start um, when doing it now, if you haven't already, I would suggest that you go back and watch my first diamond painting video. Um, it's the one that doesn't have my ugly mug in it. And there I actually talk a lot about how to do it and do's and don'ts. And there's lots of tips and a tutorial in there. Um, so it's a really good place to start. <coughs> but I'll try and add some things that I haven't, uh, haven't mentioned in this one. Also, my other videos are good because there's always little tips and things in each one and I don't have adverts at the start so I'm not just saying that because I want you to watch it and give me money. Um, the point of these videos why I started was just to help people out because at the time there wasn't a lot of info available. Um, there's a lot more now which is good. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try and answer some questions. I've got my list ready to go and I will try and help you as much as I can. So. The first question that I've seen is, oh, by the way, I have my uh, little nine month year old in the other room, so you might hear the occasional squeak or the telly. <laughs> uh, the first one that I've seen is people asking the best size to buy, the best size of diamond painting. And for that question, and probably for all the others as well, I would say join a diamond painting group. Uh, there is one that I'm in as well, because you get to see other people's paintings and you get to see how big they are and how well they turned out you can get guides um, there are guides about the same picture and it'll be in say 30 by 30 40 by 40 and you can see the difference it makes uh, the size but I would say just join a diamond painting group because that will help a lot more you can just see other people's pictures I'll post a link down below of the group that I'm in uh, that really is the best thing to do, although as a rule I would say don't go lower than 40. Um, I think the ones I've mainly done have been 40 by 60, 50 by 60, that sort of thing. And I've always been happy with the level of detail, I think any bigger, because I do the full coverage ones mainly. I think if I went any bigger it would take too long to do and if I went any smaller I'd lose detail. That's a sweet spot for me, but obviously it's different for everyone which is why I'd say just look at what other people have done. If you're doing something, if you're doing a picture that's very simple, just a flower um, or a little rose, like the first picture that i done, then you can go small and it, it doesn't matter because there's not much detail. But obviously if you're doing a big landscape with lots of things, uh, lots of detail, then the bigger the better. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's a difficult one to answer. But like I said, just, or also when you buy your diamond painting, if you ask a seller, okay, I want it in a 50 by 50, or, oh, I, I don't know if I want it in this size or this size. If you ask them, they will send you uh, the, the pattern, like the mock-up. And so you can see from there um, how much detail you'll get and how good it will be. And also, if you watch, I don't think it's my last video, I think it's the one before. I show you about, um, tell you about a website called Stitch Fiddle and it's an online pattern generator for cross stitch and you can do it for diamond paintings as well so you can say the size that you want and it will give you a mock-up like what the sellers do so either or you can do it yourself or you can ask the seller but yes you need to just find your sweet spot of what you want how much detail you want and work it out from there but obviously just don't go buying a massive great big landscape and get it 20 by 30 or something because it's just not going to work it's not going to show up all the detail uh, next question is where to buy from now people it varies I like to buy mine from Aliexpress um, which is a Chinese website and also there's wish.com 
W-I-S-H, that is also a Chinese website. I think it's very similar to AliExpress. And I've, had, I've heard good and bad things about both websites. You can also go to Amazon and eBay and there's more chance there of buying a kit that's from your country. Um, something I've heard a lot is people, they'll have a problem with one of the Chinese websites and they'll think it's better to buy in their own country, which is more expensive, but faster. Um, personally, I found AliExpress to be pretty much fine. I think I didn't have one colour of one of the kits I had. Uh, I did buy a kit from the UK on eBay. Uh, that was the first kit I ever bought. And yeah, actually, when I completed the picture, I realised that it was completely wrong. It was a rose and the colour of it was wrong. It was brown instead of gold. And when I told the seller, I don't think she believed me, even though it said on the side of the packet, albeit in Chinese. But so yeah, I mean, good and bad things happen, whether it's in your country or not. And you take a chance, whether you buy you know, from from your country or China. Um, I mean, at least with the big websites, I'm not sure about Wish, but I think with AliExpress, if they send you the wrong thing, or if there's a really big problem, you can get your money back, you can open a dispute, as you can with eBay, and I assume Amazon. So it's pros and cons, really. You can either buy from China and wait for delivery, uh, which might take a while, but it is a lot cheaper, or you can buy in your country, and it's faster but more expensive but either way there might be problems there might not be problems so it's up to you but like I said I, I buy from China um, <clears throat> as for delivery times I've had things take up to about a month to arrive but also if you I think one time I did buy a couple of pictures from the same store and they sent it um, with a faster delivery method and I got it in a few days so yeah, again, it's like how long's a piece of string? It could be a few days, it could be weeks. I would say if you really want to work on something now, then just buy in your country and maybe get something from China as well so you've got something to work on in the meantime. But yeah, again, it's it's up to you. I've like I said, I've done both. Um so if you have a few on the go, then at least you can wait for China and you're not sitting there twiddling your thumbs waiting for something to arrive but yes it does take a while coming from China which is slightly annoying but I think on places like, like Wish and AliExpress you have a lot more choice there are tons of pictures as you'll find out when you look there's so much and it's so cheap and yeah it's worth the wait I think definitely um <clears throat> okay the next question is full drill versus partial drill now, a full drill, I'm going to show you my rolled up picture. This is completed, but like I said, it's rolled up. This is a full drill. And as you can see, it's square tiles, completely covering the picture. My picture of wolves that I finished recently. And it's entirely covered. And it takes a while. Um, but yeah, we'll get onto that in a second. I wouldn't say how to tell the difference when you're on AliExpress at least um, probably on eBay as well if you look in the item description it should say something about pasting area full or pasting area partial or full drill or partial drill and that will give you a clue as to whether it's going to be completely full like the one I've just showed you where the entire canvas is sticky um, or whether the background is printed and you're just filling in the main subjects of the picture so if it's flowers in a vase or something, the background's all done, you just need to do the flowers in the vase. Um, so yeah, full pasting area obviously is going to be entirely tiles or full drill, they call it different things. And it's kind of easier to tell because square drills, as far as I'm aware, 99% of the time you don't get square tiles that are partial. So if you're looking for a full drill and it's square, then it probably is going to be a full drill uh, and the round ones are usually partial well they can be both but there's more chance of it being partial so i just say just carefully read the description and you still might get the wrong thing i recently bought uh, a picture with round drills or round tiles whatever you want to call it and it was meant to be full coverage 
and I bought it and it wasn't, it was partial and I think that's happened to a few people but again that's just annoyingly one of those things. Sometimes it's a bit of a surprise but you can always just get a refund or send it back. I think a lot of people have had success in getting refunds on AliExpress if it was the wrong thing. Um, and like I said, I assume you can from eBay or Amazon or wherever as well. If it's the wrong thing then I don't see why they wouldn't give you your money back. Um, as for the pros and cons of full and partial pictures, I don't have my partial one to show you but if, if you watch my first video, uh, my first diamond painting video, I do show you a full and a partial. The full is the one that I'm in the middle of working on and the partial is the rose, the gold rose that I show. Um, now partial obviously is a lot quicker, much much quicker, I'd say it takes less than half the time. Um, but the effect to me isn't as good. Uh, full drill can take quite a while, it can take weeks and weeks, although I think some people can knock them out pretty quickly but I can't. The full drill will take a lot longer but it does look much much better and it does have that effect of you know just being entirely covered, nothing's printed and it looks a lot more impressive I think. But again it's up to you and a lot of the partials you can have uh, shiny rhinestones to make them nice and sparkly um, and it's very hard to find the sh shiny ones that are full coverage so again oh, I'm being really put off I've got someone in the next room my other half but I keep thinking that he's listening to me sorry but again yeah it's up to you it's more impressive I think with the full drill but takes longer uh, partial if you just want to do this for you know a bit of fun and you do want to do all different designs <clears throat> and you don't want to be stuck on one thing for weeks and weeks then by all means go for partial I would say uh, what's the next one? Oh yeah the eternal question of pen or tweezers now when you get your kit you'll probably get a pen and some tweezers now these are my ones that I've painted badly which is all coming off and this is the pink pen that you get you also get some little wax that comes with it I've got all my gubbins, I try to put them all together the wax can be all different colours well I don't even know what you call it this stuff it can be all different colours, pink and green and whatnot and this goes with the pen <coughs> You have to just peel it back and just poke it so you get some of the waxy stuff in the end of the pen and that makes it sticky so you can it's basically better for round tiles I think so then you could just pick up the round tiles and put it on and pick it up and that's how you do the pen as I'm sure most of you know and obviously the tweezers I find the buns that are bent at the end to be better. Although I've seen people using them like that to pick up the tiles. But uh, as far as I know, it's like that. <laughs> but again, some people prefer the pen, some people prefer the tiles. It is entirely up to you. I find that with the round stones, you have to use the pen really because with the tweezers, they just slip um, and you end up just pinging things across the room, which isn't good. So I'd say pen definitely with rounds, but when I'm using uh, square tiles, it has to be tweezers. But it's personal preference, it is entirely up to you. That's why they give you both, because you might want to use one or you might want to use the other. If it was set in stone, then they will just never give you one of them. Um, God, I've got so many tweezers. <laughs> That's not all of it. I have more, I couldn't fit any more in the bag. Okay, square it around. Okay, storage. Now, um, so the storage of paintings and the storage of tiles. When I've completed a painting, as you can see from the one that I showed, wrap it up loosely. Don't wrap it up too tight. I put a rubber band around it 
Um, No, someone, I found this today and someone had put something on top of it and squashed it like a pancake. Which is really, really annoying. Because now look what I've got. I've only just noticed that. Oh, how annoying. This is what happens when you put things in a cupboard and don't say to people that it's there. Oh, how annoying. Well, as long as I remember to fix it, otherwise I'll send it to the framers and it will have caps. <laughs> I think that's it. On the whole, these tiles, they are pretty resilient, I must admit. They're, the sticky glue is very sticky and also if you're using squares, they click into place. Um, so it, has to t it takes a lot to knock them out. Oh, I'm really annoyed about that, God. <sighs> oh well, this is only two tiles. It can be fixed. Oh, it's annoyed me now. Anyway, that is how I store my uh, paintings, partial ones as well, because otherwise if you store them flat, then you have to find a large area to, to put them. Um, and as for storing tiles, I've done a few things in the past. I've used these things, which I know a lot of people use. Sorry if my daughter's very loud. I've used these ones to store the tiles in once I finish the painting, just to put the spares in. Um, but I ended up changing because the there's just not enough room, so I ended up just using the grip seal bags. Um, and I also used these, and these are the things that twist, and so you can stack them however you want. She's so loud. I think I've just got a few odds and sods in there at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I switched from these because they were taking up way too much room, and it was a pain because you try and label them so that all the labels are at the front but yeah over time the labels just kind of go everywhere and then you're not sure what's in where um and what i've done now for my tile storage which i think works the best i use an old chocolate box and i put them inside inside the little grippy bags Just label them up. Oh, it's backwards. And if you get the cheap bags, then yeah, they can rip and they're not very good. But just make sure you buy ones that are slightly thick. Um, and in my in my little box at the bottom, I have the paperwork, which is always useful if. For some reason you need to refer to the list of numbers and symbols, even though it's printed on the canvas, but it's good to have it there as a backup, just in case you need it. Um, so that's how I store mine. Loads of people do different things, it's, it's personal preference. Um, I'd say just be careful, uh, make sure that it has a hole big enough to pull the tiles back in, because I think some people they use... Um, like there was someone who, I thought it was a great idea, they used old Tic Tac boxes. But for me, I couldn't do it because the the hole is so small, I don't know how you'd put the tiles back in. Uh, but at least with a bag, you can just pour it back in from the tray. Okay. Painting storage, we've done that. Completing an air. I'll do that in a second, because I've got to show you. I have to move the pad. When you have completed an area, actually I'm going to stop this and I'm going to move you and I'm going to show you my picture. Okay, so here's the area that I'm working on at the moment. I think this picture is a 50 by 60, I think. So what I've done, because the paper, ugh, yeah, I've, I have messed up there, don't, don't look at that bit. What you should do is fold back the paper 
and just cut down the middle and then you can just fold it back in sections. God, my daughter is so loud, she's really off-putting. <laughs> um, so I've started this area, I've done another one up there, but you can start wherever you want, does not matter. So basically make sure you cut, do not tear, because it will rip. I accidentally ripped a bit up there, which is easily done, annoyingly. And you will end up with bits of paper stuck to the canvas, stuck to the glue. And then your sticky area will not be sticky anymore. So that's why it's important to cut it. So once you've done that, fold an area back. You can choose an area whatever size you want. I actually like to work in quite large areas, about the size of my hand. And that's usually what I go by. Because if I work in a tiny area, then it just seems like a lot of effort and I haven't got much to show for it. So as you can see, I have not done much of this yet. But I have done the bottom row. A good thing to do is to get tape, just um, masking tape, and just cover the sticky bit. As you can see, there's like a sticky bit that goes off the canvas. So just cover all along there. Because of, otherwise the fibres of your clothes or just anything, just bits of fluff will get stuck to it and it will just look black and disgusting. Um, what a lot of people do when they do their bottom rows, they use a ruler to straighten up their tiles as well. I personally don't do that because I don't care if it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect and it's not meant to be perfect. Um, but again, it's up to you. You can use a ruler to straighten out if you want. Um, when you have done a section, what I do is make sure that all the tiles are down correctly. So there's a couple of ways to do that. I'd say the first one is to get a light, say if it's your lamp light or phone light or whatever you want to use, and just look at the tops of the tiles and see if there's anything that looks out of place one that just doesn't shine like the rest of them and it might be off in which case you just need to give it a press and make sure it's down um, the other thing that I do is just fill the area like I said once all the tiles are down because you don't want to get the sticky bit and make it unsticky um, so fill the area and you, if you feel any bumps then it might be something poking up and you have to press that down what a lot of people like to do is get a rolling pin and just roll over the area to click anything down that is up. So that's another good thing to do. Uh, every time I've worked on my picture as well, when I've finished, I put heavy books on the top just to press down what I've done. And make sure you keep the paper down on the area that you're working on. Um, which is also why I put books on the top as well, not only to press it down, but just to make sure that it's not gonna, the paper's not gonna flap up. Um, because if dust gets in the sticky area, then it'll be less sticky, which obviously we don't want. It's a very, very easy, easy craft, to be honest. You don't have to worry too much. It's not the end of the world if there's a patch that isn't sticky. Uh, but I'm just gonna flip you back, and then I will talk to you some more. Hello again. Right, as I was about to say to you, if an area isn't sticky, it's not the end of the world. If it's only a small area, what I do is I just get a bit of clear nail varnish, make sure it's not too drippy and messy, and just dab on uh, to the area that's not sticky and put the tile on, and it's fine. It will make it stick. Clear nail varnish is like the wonder glue. It's brilliant. <laughs> it glues everything. Um, okay. What happens if you have a disaster and you drop all your tiles on the floor? What I've heard people do in the group, which I think is a brilliant idea, is they get some tights or a thin sock or whatever, put it over the end of the hoover and just hoover them up and all the tiles will stick to the sock and they can take them off. So that's a really good idea. That makes it much easier because it can be a pain when you drop them all. I haven't done that yet though, actually. Thank God. Um, Okay, when you get your canvas, how to get rid of the folds is the next question. I would say I've tried a few different things and some things have worked and some haven't. I 
have ironed the canvas, I've stuck it under the bed, and to me I'd say the best thing that I've tried is just leaving it and just letting it unfold by itself to be honest because when I've ironed it and when I've put it under the bed sometimes the creases that are there you just make them worse you make the creases into a proper fold she's so loud um, and that's obviously not what you want because it's if it's just folded a bit and it's just bending back on itself, that doesn't matter. It's only when it's a proper fold and the glue bunches up and the paper bunches up, that's when it's a problem because the tile just doesn't want to sit on a lump. So, I mean, you can't really ruin anything too much, I'd say. Do what you think. Putting it under the mattress, what I tried, uh, stick it under the mattress for a few days, that worked well. It was very flat, but again, it just, it has some folds in it. Um, doing the iron that worked but again it still had some folds in it I would say my best advice would be just lay it on the table maybe use a paperweight or something just to weigh down any bits that are sticking up and as you're working on it and as you're leaning on it it will be unfolded um, it will unfold by itself you won't see it when it's done you won't see it when it's framed it's really it's really no big deal as long as you don't have big serious folds um, then it, it's fine, it will be fine. Uh, okay, how to frame your pictures. This actually is not as bad as what it sounds, um, or as what some people think it is. You just frame it like a normal picture. I have ordered frames myself from a UK company called eFrame. Um, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, again, because it's custom and you can specify whatever you want. Um, and I've always ordered with matting because I find it a lot easier if it's matted you just have, I don't know, a little bit of bit of leeway uh, and that's worked fine with me I've, to be honest, framing the diamond paintings I've done has been the, probably the first framing I've ever done in my life and I found it okay, so there you go um, but also what I've done with the bigger pictures, the more important ones I've taken it to a guy down my local market who does framing and yeah he's framed stuff for me no problem uh, nothing has come off no, no tiles have come off again it's it's not the cheapest thing in the world but they come back looking really good um, I've also known people to just go and buy old picture frames from a charity shop or wherever and just frame it that way just because there's diamonds on there or tiles it doesn't need any special treatment. You don't need a special box frame or anything like that. You can just frame it like you would something normal. As far as I know, that's been my experience anyway. Because um, I don't really poke out that much. Um, okay, right. What to do if you've run out of a colour? Uh, this is a bit of a sore subject for me. With our um, In our diamond painting group, I set up recently, well, a while back, a, a tile donation scheme uh, because the point was that when most of us have finished doing a diamond painting, we will save our tiles and I thought we've all got these stashes of tiles, we might as well help each other and so if someone runs out of a tile they can look down the list and say, oh yeah Nick, she's in the UK, that's where I am and they'll message me saying, oh do you have any 310 or whatever and I'll say, yep, here you go, and I'll send it to you, and that's the way it'll work if you run out of a colour, rather than ordering from China or having to wait forever and faff about with the seller. Um, so I set that up, and it. no one used it, as far as I know. I had one person, out of all the months that it's been up for, I had one person asking me for tiles, um, and because I didn't see their message, they ended up getting it elsewhere anyway, which is kind of annoying, but... I just kept seeing people posting in the main discussion asking for tiles, um, which is what I wanted to avoid because posts in the main dis discussion, they just get lost. Um, so yeah, I ended up just not updating the list for a while because I just thought, what's the point, no one's using it. And people were just adding themselves in the comments section anyway, uh, which was fine. Um, but yeah, it's been updated now, um, <laughs> not by me, I just haven't had the time. Um, 
So again, if, if you've run out of a colour, you can use that. You can find someone in your country on the list and you can send them a message and ask if they have what you need and I'm sure that they will send it to you um, because it just makes sense. Otherwise, the thing to do the thing to do when you get your diamond painting is check everything as soon as you have it. I'm going to get my hang on. When you get your paperwork, where am I? There we are. As you can see, I've checked all mine off. Um, oh. Hello. Oh, no, no, Baba. Someone's getting upset. Needs to go for a nap. When you get your paperwork, you will have three columns. Um, the first one is the colour number. Uh, sorry, that's a symbol. Why am I pointing to that? <laughs> that's the colour number. Sorry, please ignore my, my little girl. She's just tired. Past her nap time. You'll get the number colour. These are DMC numbers. Uh, so anyone who's done cross stitch or anything like that will know the DMC numbers. Um, so that's the DMC number, which is what you should ask for if you're asking for colours on the toll donation list. Um, then you have the number of bags and then the number of tiles. There's about 200 tiles in a bag, in a standard size little bag, they're all joined together. Um, so if I was checking off this list, I would say, okay, 154, oh, it's really backwards for me. There it is, 154, I should have five bags. So I would, if I was checking that one off, I would make sure that I've got five little bags joined together. Sometimes it's one more because they do give you extra tiles, um, which is useful. That's something worth knowing that they do generally give you about 10% more tiles than what you need. So if you have a defective tile, don't feel you have to use it if you don't want to. You can or you can't, it, it's up to you. But if you choose to throw it away, then that's fine. You should have extra tiles. Um, but bear in mind, if you have tons of one colour you will have more extras whereas if you only have a couple of bags of one colour you will not have many extras because they do it on percentage um, so that's something to be aware of so be careful if you haven't got many of those tiles you can't afford to throw them everywhere <laughs> um, so yeah check your colours if you've run out of a colour email the seller I'm sure they help you out or if they don't or if you don't want to then just use the tile donation scheme Please someone use it. <laughs> don't just put it in the discussion because it will get lost and we don't want that. Um, so, how to frame, run out of colours, done that. Unsticking parts, yeah I mentioned that. Storage, I mentioned that. Wow, I think we've done everything. I think we've covered all the questions. I can't think of anything else anyway. In a nutshell, if you're new to the craft, please do not worry. It is very easy. Oh, 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 I forgot something. I forgot something. If you're looking at your symbols, again, I mentioned this on the first video. If symbols look alike or they're just really hard to see, just grab your phone and get the camera and just zoom in or just take a picture and then zoom in on that picture and you'll be able to see easier. Also, get some good magnification. I personally use a jeweler's loop 10 times jeweler's loop and that for me works brilliant it's perfect um, but there are all kinds of different magnifiers that you can get just have a look on ebay or wherever you'll find something that suits you uh, but magnification is definitely important because you, it's not worth straining your eyes over and getting a headache um, but yes right again to sub up it is a very very easy craft it is like paint by numbers but stick tiles by numbers don't feel intimidated by the, the huge size of the canvas and all the thousands of little squares. It takes a long time, but it's not hard at all. And if I can do it, anyone can. 
Uh, it's great fun. It's very relaxing. Uh, what I do is I like to either watch some YouTube videos or watch Twitch or listen to some music. And it's just a really, really nice way to relax. My setup, as you can tell, it's I'm in the dining room. I'm where everyone walks past pretty much. Everyone has to walk past me if they want to go to the kitchen or upstairs. And that's really good. I was doing it up in my office um, last year, but because my daughter arrived, I wanted to be downstairs where everyone was so I could keep an eye on things and see what's going on. Uh, and I think it's a really good place to be with everyone around. But it is entirely up to you. If you want to have a little sticky diamond painting area, then that is great because that's what I done initially anyway. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun thing to do. Come and join the Facebook group. If you're feeling brave, make a video because, you know, it's fun. We need more people doing videos. Uh, this craft is really taking off, which is great. Like I said, when I done my first video, I couldn't find anything on YouTube. It was all in Russian and you can only get so far when you can't understand what people are saying. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a really nice time doing your diamond paintings. I hope this video has been useful. Again, please go and watch the first one uh, if you want to know more. I think it's just called Diamond Painting Tips and Tricks, um, but I've got a few videos. Uh, next video, I will give you my progress for people who uh, who watch my videos. Um, I did finish the, the secret picture for my sister. I made her an Audrey Hepburn picture. I don't think I mentioned it because it was a secret and her little girl watches these videos and so I didn't want her to know. Um, and yeah, I'm working on one for my mum. These make great gifts. They're really, really good. Uh, I know some people make them and they sell them on Etsy. You can make, uh, you can get cards to make gift, um, greetings cards. Some people use their leftover tiles to stick around frames. It's really good. It's very open-ended. Um, so I hope you have fun with your new kit if you're new to this. If you're not new to this, I'll be back again, hopefully next month or even sooner with some progress. I'm planning on doing a few different things, uh, making new videos which are completely different to diamond painting. Um, ones which I'm kind of a bit scared about, but hey, we need to be brave sometimes. Uh, and I hope you have fun with your kit. And yeah, don't, don't be afraid, it's all good. Come and join the group, uh, the diamond painting group on Facebook. We're all lovely and we'll all help you if you get stuck. And have a good time and I will see you hopefully soon, hopefully in the coming weeks. So bye everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for comments. Please, if you have any questions, just ask and I'll get back to you. Sometimes it takes me a while because I'm just a terrible procrastinator, but I will get back to you, I promise. Um, and yes, see you soon. Bye.